Welcome everybody to the Raw Podcast Show. This is John Smith here. I got John Rutan, and today we have uh, Mr. Tim Martin. Tim Martin was on our show early in the year, and uh, he wanted to come on. He called me up a couple days ago and said, hey, John, we got to do a show on this bill. It's a bill, right? It is. Tim? It's a house bill. A house bill, and he wanted to talk about this house bill. Uh, we haven't had too many shows going on in the summer here, so we've got to get some more content. So I said, let's do it. Let's run it. So, Tim, i would be honest with you. I didn't prep for the show or anything. I usually don't prep I for the show. I didn't either, and this is the first I've heard of what the show's about. Yes. So nice. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So, so, Tim, I really want to know. I'm interested in what you've got going on here. Uh, obviously, first off, what is the house bill? What's which, which number is it? This is House Bill 4691. Uh, 4691. It was brought on oh, by... Okay. Uh, Republican Jim Runstad. Okay. Um, Do you know where he's from? I don't. I, what, what area? I don't know what area he's from. I've been in contact with our local representative, and, and I actually haven't had any resolve from him yet. Um, kind of part of the reason I want to come on here and, and hopefully touch some of the listeners that we have on here is, you know, I know there's quite a few of them. Right. So, uh, as we all know, the House Bill 4691, well, as we all don't know, I guess we'll say, because... Yeah, I'm know. sure I'm sure 90% of people in America don't know what a house bill even is. Well, <clears throat> house bill is, is something that's being proposed by one of the uh, senators, or I guess not senators, but representatives in the House. Uh, they want to push forth this bill to actually turn it into law. And without the support, they're basically going to fail. Okay. And so this 4691 has been on the books for just about a year now. Be- and Before you jump into what the summary is, hey John, why don't you explain to the viewer or the listener uh, what uh, a how represent- something becomes law? Well, what, explain to them who, like, what uh, a House of Representative is and who represents us. Do we okay. know? Yeah. We, okay. So we're talking Michigan, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. So Michigan, we've got uh, right now for Hillsdale. Um, uh, Eric Lloyd Hoiser is our representative. He's a state rep. He's the state rep. He's the one that represents your. Um, uh, wishes and, and will uh, on a state level on a state level in in the uh, it, um, legislative branch government then you have people that are state senators and that's like shirky's position that, right? yeah he's a state senator in fact he's our state senator um, and senators are so in the state in the state we've got what's called a bicambrial legislature the same as what we have in the federal government we've got a bi uh, by Cambrial. And that means you've got one house of representatives and you've got a second house of senators. Those two houses combined are called Congress in the national level. Here in the state level, that is the legislature, those two houses combined. Okay. And so for a bill to become law, it has to be anybody can come up with a bill. Let's let's be clear on that. I, I can write a bill. Uh, Tim can write a bill. You can write a bill. No, I couldn't. But and you okay. can, but, but well, you could. <laughs> you you could. You've billed me before, I think. But anyway, you can write a bill, and you can send that to your representative. And your representative then can. It has to be sponsored on the floor by either a representative or a senator. Once it's sponsored in their chambers or in their in their house. And it goes through, it goes to a vote, it can go to a committee, they might vote it to a committee, it goes to a committee, comes out of committee, they'll vote on it, once it passes, it goes to the other house. If the other house passes it, or they might change it, it then it goes up to the, if if it's got enough votes, then it goes up to the governor so to it, it could the law. potentially exchange a lot of hands. Oh, it does, oh, yeah. and it has to go through an exhaustive, um, you know, uh, uh, badminton game of back and forth here and there but it's designed that way on purpose exactly right? exactly things should not happen fast because that's when injustice happens and so this is this is how it goes so what it goes then happens is if it if it doesn't have enough votes it just dies it's done if it has enough votes then it goes to the governor the governor has the choice to either sign it into law or to veto it if the governor vetoes it, it comes back to the legislature. If the legislature decides that, you know what, they really want it, then with a two-thirds vote, as long as two-thirds of them vote, they can overturn that veto. Wow. And then it becomes okay. law. So there's a lot of checks and balances there. Interesting. In that, so. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get the summary of this bill. Sure. Uh, Hillsdale County, I've learned from, well, obviously learned from you guys from the first time I was on here and everything we've went through. Government around here is a little shady. Like, let's put it simple. It's pretty shady around here. And when you say shady, do you do you mean like corruption shady, or do you mean like maybe 
um, apathy or like what? What do you? No. What do you? What do you I, mean by shady? I'm gonna say it's corruption, shady. They're, you mean like by intent? Yeah. Well, I do. wow. Okay. And, and and let me say that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no to that. But the other thing is what I'm going to say is our Madison when he put together the the, the national constitution. There's some of the things he said in the Federalist Papers, such as faction is is sown in the very nature sure. of man, and so. Uh, one of the famous things from from um, from what Madison said, and I believe it's in in uh, essay fifty one, is he said if if men were angels we wouldn't need government, and if angels governed man we wouldn't need a constitution. So the fact of the matter is, th- it's not uh, they're not um, shady, um, and it's the only one that's shady and they're bad like that. That's the very nature of right, them, right. and that's why we have the checks and balances to stop that. It's not it doesn't make them bad; it just makes them human. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so, well, this this. But we bill, need to be critical of our government, and that's what keeps that. The, re- the reason, to the reason why I'm kind of like, you know, I don't know how to approach this is because we get criticized for dividing people in our community. No, no, as, no, no. On the road. There's very there's a few people that have criticized yeah us we, for we get criticized people. on the show here saying but that we're being negative I, Tim, or where did you learn a lot of this stuff and getting involved from where uh, did you learn that once i got involved it was just pretty well much he, right he in le- my face you learned it from your own experience yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely but one of the, one of the things you said when you first came in was we kind of got you started to open your eyes in a couple areas not nah, no to be honest with you you know i just didn't have I was like most of the nor- most of the everybody else in this area. I just didn't have the time. You just so didn't have you didn't to follow you, the you didn't dedicate yeah. the, right. your time and money it and energy into it. It wasn't my issue because once I voted for them and they were supposed to do the job I elected them to do, and I just assumed they were doing it. See, this is exactly why most people get involved with national politics and not local politics. Well, Even though local politics has the most bearing on your life and your everyday life and what goes on. And I see that so much every day. Yeah, it's amazing, media. isn't it? It's unbelievable to me to see the people argue about how federal government trumps all this local government, and <laughs> these people just don't understand. Yeah, that, they don't. You know, you go to a local meeting. Um, for example, Adams Township, where all of this started for me, was the the first meeting I went to. There was probably a hundred people in there mm-hmm. because it was packed. Of, because of our issue. It was packed. And then now, if you go to a meeting, there may be seven. Yeah, yeah. that's now, the way I, it I heard says. there was like four or five last time. The, mm-hmm. You know, the village of North Adams, same way. I mean, the first meeting we went to there, it was a packed house, and the police were there in the whole nine yards. This now, I mean, the last meeting I went to, there was four of us in there. Yep. So it it only affects people when it affects them directly. Yeah, the seat, like with CPS knocks on your door, nobody cares until they but, knock on your door. There, but right? it's my it's my contention, and only my, my opinion, that this is taught, this has been taught in our John Dewey Public School education yeah, yeah, model it, 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 for it's the done last by design, 70 years right? well, it's been des- and, and that, yeah that kind of goes into our conversation about the college thing is or the sports sports thing not really yeah. the college thing but the sports thing is just a way to keep you asleep yep yeah uh, you know that's just well, look at rome which was another yeah, great republic. coliseum yeah the coliseum in the in the sports and you know the the gladiators that all took over everybody started rooting for their gladiator and, and it was shortly after that rome burned you know, the you, know, you know you know we are getting off topic so let's get right, a summary sorry, sorry. yeah so so i one thing that touches a lot of people in Hillsdale County, and it, it touches a lot of people in counties in general with the way that life is anymore today, is is uh, custody and child support issues and well, stuff okay. to that effect. You know, Tim, I'm a convicted felon for child support, so I'm I'm very uh, <laughs> aware of what's it's, <laughs> you know what, it's what's funny, that about. It's very funny you mentioned that. It's not funny that you mentioned that, right? Of course. It, so you're going to slap a guy in society as a felon. Because he hasn't paid his child support, and then we're going to say if you have a felony, you're not allowed to have a, a one gun, of your, or you're not one of your God given rights. Yeah, right. exactly. This this share this House Bill forty six ninety one is actually classified and called the Shared Parenting Bill. Okay, uh, what it what it basically is is it doesn't give either parent the upper hand. It gives every it gives each parent in the situation fifty percent custody, fifty percent responsibility. Which also eliminates child support. Okay. Which, my personal opinion, being in this system for going on the 19th year I've been in the system, is, you know, child support has become a thing of almost oh, an expected yes. paycheck. 
Yeah, well, it's a, it's a form of control, too. And, and I, I said this at one of our meetings, one of our Hillsdale Justice Project meetings, and oh my gosh, I took slings and arrows for this. But my thing is, I, my wife and I had three kids because that's all we could afford. And um, my wife would have loved to have been a stay-at-home mom, but she couldn't because we needed two paychecks. Mm-hmm. So that's what we did to raise our children. Why is it then two people can have a child get a divorce or have a child out of wedlock and all of a sudden the woman who gets granted the physical custody of the child decides that she wants to be a stay-at-home mom when my wife didn't get to choose that Mm -hmm. economics forced us to that she had to work so why is it that she doesn't have to now this woman and so she can just go on baby daddy's paycheck well not only that but not only does she go on baby daddy's paycheck, but she goes on state's paycheck yeah. because now she qualifies for all the state aid. Well, no, no, don't get me wrong because it goes the other way too. I know a couple men that are getting paid by their by their ex-wives and they can't be stay-at-home daddies either. Sure. They, they, right. That's not, I, they shouldn't I, be I living think, on I their paycheck. I think this paycheck. issue goes beyond money. I think this is, go, actually, John, this goes probably goes on to the idea that uh, locus parentis. Yes. Uh, and so, so, Tim, I don't know if you know, um, like, well, explain what loco parentis is. Well, that's first. acting as a guardian. So, like, like when this, someone acts as the parent like, to the child. Like when, sure, you, sure. when your child goes to school for eight hours, who's the parent? The school. Or the the school is yeah, right. The school acts as right. the okay, local. They act as that, is that. Well, that's. I think that's the position that the state or state government is taking. Um, when you and I, like, say, if, uh, I, I'm not you and I, because we can't get married and, and have a baby together, yeah, but well, I guess we can. Most certainly, can. Yeah, most I guess, certainly can. Yeah, I, guess, I guess so. <laughs> uh, no, but let's just see me and my ex. Uh, we, we have a child together, uh, my, my ex and I. I you know, I, I don't have proper English here, but uh, so we get divorced. Uh, we have a child. Uh, we, instead of her and I working out our issues and being the parent to that child, the state rep, it comes in and acts as that locos parentis. And they're represent, and they don't represent the parents at all. They only represent the child, and that they are acting as the interest of the child, and that and they're taking guardianship of your child. Yeah, and I even have problem with that because I, I don't even see that they do it in the best interest yeah, of the child. Um, one of the things that one of they the worst can't. things I, they can't because it's not their child. Well, right. my thing is Correct. the worst thing that ever happened was this friend of the court crap. Well, yeah, the administ- administration law. What happens yeah. now is it's just like uh, uh, it's just like, uh, and, and I know you're going to yell at me for oh, you're off the topic, but it's not off the topic. This is this is a model that we use, a business model that we use, and we do it in insurance, and that is with health insurance. Health insurance is a horrible product; nobody would buy unless we make it worth something. And so, what we do is, if a tonsillectomy only costs a hundred dollars, then what we do is we tell the doctor, well, well, we'll we'll take a little bit of money from everybody, make this pool of money you can borrow against it to buy uh, medical equipment and the doctor goes hey i'm on for that so but the insurance company says we only want to pay 20 cents on the dollar so that means for you to get a hundred dollars for that town selected me you have to charge me the insurance company five hundred dollars and then I pay you your hundred dollars. Well, what I do with that then is the next person that needs a tonsillectomy and they come to you, you go, oh, geez, I got to charge you five hundred dollars. I can go to them and go, hey, if you buy this insurance for two hundred dollars, we're going to save you three hundred dollars. What do you think about that? And everybody gets charged a hundred percent more than what it was worth and walks away happy. This is the same model of friend of the court. What we do is we've created an agency now that needs to be fed clothed and housed with all the electricity and gas and so now instead of paying this money and it goes to the welfare of your child half of it goes to the welfare of whom friend Friend of the the court court. (laughs) so how is the child at that point in time being taken care of no i i don't know i don't no your money don't go to the front of the court just so you know i want to make this clear because a lot of people don't understand how this works that they don't get money from me Directly, like when I bank my payment to my woman, well, how they get their money is through the state. Correct. Right. So their their money is actually given to them in, in a form of a paycheck. Okay. So or, and, and or that services. money comes off of a tree somewhere. They go and pick it. No, no, it comes out of property taxes. Yeah, and Absolutely. I'm sorry that those same parents that have the child have property. Do they? Well, 
Maybe. Okay, Maybe so not. see that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. money that they're paying to the state is going to. So the fact of the matter is, they're still paying money. Well, I'm that just, could go to the I child. I just want to make it clear because a lot of I people, know. a lot of people think their p- direct payment is it's, going it's to not the state. A dr- it's, it's not a direct payment, but the fact of the matter is, it is a payment. No, it, that person. I, I just want the make money. Clear, had that extra money, they could put it into. This is the whole problem with our taxation. We always right, talk right, about. of course. If people had less of that taxation, they would put their money where they believed it should go with EMS and those different things. They wouldn't have to ask for, for, a, for a millage. People would pay for that. But when people feel like they're under attack and having things taken from them. Yeah, it's resentful. Then, right? That's right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. even, even Franklin said that. He said when we, give our, when we gave our money to the king, there was a, a, a little time that they ever gave us back less than 50 silver pieces. But now that they demand it, there's never enough to give. And that's exactly the same concept. You know, with, with my experience of having a bunch of kids out of wedlock, um, <laughs> and, and having and and having kids in wedlock, right? I think I got a pretty good experience on what it costs to raise a child. And realistically, yeah. the mandatory experience of raising a child is less than five thousand dollars a year. Correct. Uh, so if you work at GM and you're making a thousand dollars a week, they're taking up to four hundred dollars a week out of you. I mean, it just sounds absurd. I mean, I just can't believe that they're they're willing to take that kind of money from people. And, and and then give it to another person that you already know is going to have a biased situation, and it's not like. But you know, this is this is this is not the this is not the disease. This is a symptom to the disease. The sure. disease was when the progressives decided to tear the family unit apart. Of course, when we started being able to have divorce, uh, no no fault divorce. Well, the, the morality of it, it's okay to go have children out of wedlock. Well, right, and that was pushed by the progressive liberal I mean, I, leftist side. Uh, all right, so a brief summary here. Yeah, so what this is doing? Sorry, we really took that down the road. Sorry, <laughs> it's but it's but it's, it's part how it of is. This. I mean, it's, it's part, part of, this. of this, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. And you'll see me in debates on this on social media a lot. Okay, uh, you know, I, I do get both sides. I do understand that there are fathers out there that that don't parent their children. I get it. That's I, right. I get that there's mothers out there that don't parent their children as well. So it's not. I'm not going to say that this is a one-sided, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is a one-sided side where all women get the good side and all dads get the bad side, because it's not. It's not that way at all. What I am going to tell you this bill does is this bill puts the ball in the court for both parents to basically make it more fair, make it make it fair to the child so you're promoting this bill absolutely okay I see what you're saying. okay we need this bill to pass we need everybody to get in contact with it. tomorrow morning or, or whenever this airs eric lloyd hauser's phone just needs to be lit up daily until well, you, this goes well you got this page it has 11 pages no, to well, this right? this is there's there's an analysis and then there's the actual bill itself okay i actually got the bill itself oh so the analysis and, is the 11 pages uh this is yeah wow yeah okay now if anybody and wants you, uh, and then you got the bill you know that's you, you know what we, is this is this online i actually got this emailed to me from uh jim rumstead's office okay so we can put this online okay Absolutely. now you said you uh, we, we talked about eric lloyd Heuser being the state rep right for this area and you said hey light his phone up it's hard to do if you don't know the number that's so correct. eric's office number is 517 373 one seven nine four again that's five one seven three seven three one seven nine four all right and, and tim so this this makes it so it's more equal for both parents to parent their child is that that's th- that's correct th- okay what this what this does is it gives every situation a 50 50 custody okay so like for an example if i don't immunize my wife immunized how do you how do you handle a situation like that that's that's going to be where adults have to become adults anymore. Okay. This this has to be you have to do the give and take on this and it's something that medical is just something that's no, tough to deal what, with. What, right? what, what still, happens in a married couple a married when family they, yeah. when one wants to vax and eight one doesn't. Sure. Same thing, right? You're forced to work things out for the good of the family well, unit. Let's let's just put it simple. And you can when, have a family union without being together. I'm, that's I, correct. Look exactly. At me, look at me and Lindsay and, and Connor. Ex- but that's exactly what Tim's talking about. This bill is about. It's creating that it's family about union again. Creating that family unit again. And, and this, our bond with Connor's mom, my my son's mom, we're out of wedlock, and we you know we fooled around a few times. We have a twelve year old son. 
we have an excellent relationship, excellent communication. Yes, you do. Res- respect each other. In fact, it, it's better than some married. Yeah, I would say it's uh, probably better than most. Well, like a couples. lot of marriages I see, not most, but, mm-hmm. but a sure. lot that I see. So um, we have great respect for each other. When when it comes to medical, we have, like you were saying, we have to just, we, we're going to have to work, work it out. out. Right? work it out. And we don't immunize, but like you don't think that there's been times where she wanted to or like where she got the pressure to or. Sure. So. I, um, so okay, so this bill is is help pushing for a, make creating a better unit, this a does. family unit, and and it you know what it also allows is what I like about this bill the most is it it puts the child first. What are some highlights in there? Well, a lot of the high, a lot of the a lot of the studies that they've done have shown that the children suffer because they are neglected one way or the other from parents. Absolutely, you know. So if so if you have a child that doesn't get to spend time with you and spends more time with mom or vice versa, that's a mental instability in that child. One of the biggest problems we have in today's society is a mental health issue or a mental Absolutely. type of an issue. You mean daddy issues? Uh, not if just you want to call it I mean, that, but no, I mean like yeah. let's let's be fair but here. But we've got learning dis. We've got a lot of kids that are learning disabled just because they don't have a good structured, s- settled home life. I I've seen this and I've seen this in some families where, uh, when the children are with mom, mom absolutely trash talks dad. Yeah. When the children are with dad, the dad actually trash talks mom. So the kids are getting this bombardment from both sides that their family's trash. Well, what do you think they're going to start internalizing exactly. after a while? Exactly. Well, from my experience, I, I came from a divorce home, and my mom badmouthed my dad, right? So uh, going to my dad's house was um, a terrifying experience because I hear nothing but bad experiences. He used to beat me with a ba- as a baby. or or and Let me be fair. He was 18 when he had me, so he was a child having a child, right? Yeah. So uh, my mom would say that he used to beat me as a baby and beat her. So when I had to go visit him, you think I even wanted to visit him? You in were fact, expecting to be beat. Yeah. In fact, I remember seeing him like a couple, a handful of times up to the age of six. Uh, my mom made sure to like make it difficult for him. And then uh, at the age of six, I I was living in California. They flew me out to see him. So the first, this is really like the first time I'm hanging out with him that I remember. Uh, also, being him being young and immature. I do recall times, this is we started developing, we came back to Michigan, we started developing a relationship where I'd see him more often, but he would be, you know, just developing his lifestyle. So, like, he'd be in and out of houses, you know, moving from place to place, because mm-hmm. he, he didn't have a real job at the point at that point yet, and he wasn't established. Or he would do silly stuff, like goof around with his guy friends and act gay. Well, I didn't know how to interpret that. But right? he already, I mean, and this is part of the problem, he already, he already showed that he was too immature right. to even have a career, a life, and all that. And yet he's having a child, right. and and, say, and, I, and I've always said, you know, you got to have a license to own a dog and a car and, a, <laughs> and do a business. <laughs> but any two fools can have a kid. So, so my mom talked bad about him. He didn't really talk bad about my mom, but uh, you know, I always had a, a certain level of resentment towards him because of my mom, what she created in my brain sure. towards my father. And, uh, and you don't think that that gave you a little bit of a learning disability in certain areas, I, I, or? How about critical thinking? You yeah, know, absolutely. So, so for exactly. sure. Uh, it, it very well could have. And uh, um, there are certain things I just couldn't understand. Like, oh, 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 when we're done, I'm charging you $65 for the therapy. Yeah, I'm listening. yeah. <laughs> so, like, I remember there's, there was a situation, and I know your daughter's here, Tim, so I'm gonna, I, I'll keep it kind of PG. But they were like, my dad and his friends were lifting weights, and whoever couldn't lift a weight got, got, um, got uh, I guess you say, hazed. Sure. I, and uh, I didn't know how to take that scene that, at six years old. Can't, right, you shouldn't be seeing, you shouldn't that, be at seeing that at six years old. All right, so well, and, and when I went to Most my mom about it, that at eighteen. When I went old. to my mom about it, it's not her explaining it to me accordingly. It was used as against my dad. Sure, right? exactly. Um, instead of explaining it properly to me, um, she used it as a tool for me to f- to fuel that fire. Right. Sure. Yep. And so now that I'm older and recognizing this and, and having the critical thinking and trying to understand, I got to like. But the thing is, I'm sure your mom was a child when she had you. She, too. she was, too. Right. See. And so I, well, so neither one had no, good. Oh, oh, right. And, and you know, and I I was 18 having my first child. Right. And now I'm thinking, where did you learn that from? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and I recognized that I was doing the same stuff that my dad was doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that living. odd? You were living. You the were apple in, never falls far you. from the you know, tree. Here, right. I was like grabbing my friend's butt in front of my kid. Like, I, I'm pretty sure my kid did not know how, uh, how, how to take that, no. right? Right. You know, like joking around with them. You know, and so um, 
I in obviously at in this this was in the eighties and nineties. Obviously the um the court system was designed slightly different. I I noticed with having my kids out of wedlock that the court has been shifting more equal up to this point. Um, maybe this bill here. Yeah, in the seventies it was really bad. Yeah, it was, yeah, one sided right. well, really bad. Yeah, you so, got to understand first. People got to understand that this this was actually designed for the quote unquote deadbeat dad. You, right. This system was actually put in place for that guy that had those kids and split town and never came back and never wanted to be well, a dad. Hell, and never. hell, in the mid-90s, uh, our state attorney Cox, I don't know, was it Brian Cox or something? Uh, it started with um, a B, I thought. But Mr. Cox, uh, he made his career on deadbeat dads. Yep. And he had a... Um, a uh, a propaganda uh, media blitz with dominoes, in fact, where kids were drawing pictures of their dads behind jail cells with dominoes, and they were posting it at Domino's pizza places. That's one of the biggest things that the attorney general does focus on in the state of Michigan, just so you know. Yeah. And, and, and that's I, their biggest. That's and I was told. Biggest, that's, that's the biggest paycheck. And that's I, what, exactly. I was told, and this could, I, I, could, I could be wrong about this, but our state is one of the highest states for deadbeat dads being 100 grand in debt uh, to child support. Like, we have a lot of that are over a hundred thousand dollars mike cox oh mike cox okay so um with that being said uh what i do know is that at that time it was 12 percent interest and it would tag on like i think it was in july and in december mm -hmm. so 12 percent interest so when i got when me and my ex broke up i got a bill in the mail for eighteen thousand dollars saying i owe her eighteen thousand we were together the whole time and don't get me wrong i didn't i didn't take care of my kids the way i should have but we were together you know, we didn't mm -hmm. we didn't like separate or anything of that nature. Well, but one of the things I have to say is I am very proud of you how you paid that back. You well, became well an adult. Well, and, I, and I, I paid that back and did what you were I was supposed, supposed to, to do, John. So like I know, but you but, a lot of guys once they're faced with that, they're like, Screw that, I'm well, not that, doing any of well, that. I was gonna say, um And okay, that's the norm. Well, when we were when she went get the side sign up for WIC, that's when they they well, I I already know that court pushes you to sign up and like try to go after the father. I already know that. Yeah, and that's one of my issues. If I could interject really quick right here, all of these ladies that go up to FIA and apply, the first thing they do is who's the father's child? They fill out the paperwork, which is operating as a lawyer without a license, <laughs> illegal in the state of Michigan. They fill out the paperwork and tell them to take it up to the court and file on the, and so they do this automatically to file on the yep, father. Yep, they file out the, yep. And, that isn't I, I I got a little problem with that. So so when when that. she was seventeen and I was I, th I think that well, maybe she was seventeen when this happened. So she was seventeen, I was eighteen. We got a court date in the mail. Well, I was flip flopping houses because I was immature, didn't have a place to stay. I didn't get the court paperwork. She didn't go, so neither of us went. They went ahead and just issued sixty dollars a week at this time, and which isn't a lot of money essentially. But it is when you don't have a job. In nineteen ninety six, when you're a bum. It's a lot of money, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So by the time 2001 rolled around, I owe $18,000. You know, that was crazy I, for me to see. And we, what's what's silly about it, it was a week after we broke up. So like, and it was a hard breakup for her. So she would kept a lot of resentment with me. And she, mm -hmm. she did drop like, I think she dropped like 6,000. So she carried 12 over my head. Well, within like, I want to say three or four years, that 12 went to 36 mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah. With the interest. Yeah. yeah, that's the beautiful beauty of compound interest. It can work <laughs> toward for your good or against. You. So, uh, so of course, I got the felony pushed against me. She pushed it. They don't usually push. And this was when they first started hitting felonies for child support. Um, she pushed for it. They only push for the felonies if the female pushes for it, or right. the spouse, or the other right. person. So she was really pushing heavy for it. Uh, and I got five years probation and I had to pay the $36,000. Now I did pay it back in six. It took me t a total of six years to pay that back, but I was off probation in five. Um, and, uh, it was a hell of experience. So, but I do know now because when I went to court with Lindsay, so Lindsay, um, uh, it has my 12 year old son. We had a dispute when my son was 10 months old. It, she, she, uh, she was bitter cause I was in another relationship. So she she stopped, let me see Connor for 10 months. So I get a court date. I, I went to Wayne County, got this set up with the court date and everything. We went into the courtroom and the, this, it was an eye opener for me because the judge said don't, uh, to Lindsay was the only thing as the mother of your parent or of your child, the only thing you need to be concerned about is making it easy for the father. That's your only job as the mother in dealing with you as your unit is make it easy for dad. Because if you make it hard for dad, then why the hell would he even come around? Right. And so and we both walked away from that 
with our, you know we we with the critical thinking realize that we're doing with this a wrong. new appreciation yeah right. yeah so she's made it easy for me and and since she made it easy for me yeah i give her everything that she asked for and more right well as me being in the system as well I, you know i've got a set of twins that are going to be 18 this year that live in arizona right uh the last time i physically seen them they were eight yeah oh, 10 my. years ago now judge smith in hillsdale allowed her to move down there because at that time the economy was crap here hmm. her parents lived down there L- locust uh, the, the locust and, parents and he said that it would be a better situation well we had everything structured in hillsdale and everything was fine the court order was all set up we i had to fly down there uh see the kids if i wanted them for the summer i paid for them to come back come here she paid for them right. to go back right worked out great till about six months after she moved and then she went to arizona and open a new case now we've already got one in michigan but she opened one down there wow, because I'm now surprised she's they could do that all because she's a resident down yeah, there she's resident residency changes okay so with that being said my new wife at the time and i moved to wyoming mm-hmm. nothing here to worry about so we're taking off judge smith closes the case case closed okay never hear a word out of arizona ever I moved back here seven years later and get slapped with fourteen thousand six hundred dollars in arrearage. Out of, out of Arizona? No, no, because Arizona t- gets a hold of the state of Michigan and says we want you to re- we want you to support your original order. Smith does, and bam! In two weeks of being back, fourteen thousand six hundred dollars in arrears. Wow, amazing! See, that's that's not right. Now, also on top of that, now I've got case number two with my daughter, which we get along, we parent well. Like, All right. I, you know, I. We don't have to like each other. First, let me make this. Let me make this point. And make this clear. One thing: child support and custody is is not something that should be punishment for a failed relationship. No, because I don't like you, and you don't like me, and we don't have a we have an issue, and we don't have anything in common. We do have something major in common, right? And that's your child. That child is not the failed relationship. So don't you know? That's where this is coming. That's where this house bill is coming into place. Is too many times the resentment of failed relationship is being taken out on the kid. Right. And so back to what I was saying is uh, my daughter's wife or my daughter's mom and I, we can parent well. Do I agree with what she does? No. Does she agree with what I do? Probably not. But when it comes to my daughter, we understand that this is what we have to do to make it right for her for right. her yeah it's so we did go back in front of smith on the whole on this issue and he is he is ruling a little more favoritism towards the dad now um he's not quite at 50 50 but he's you know we had her week on week off in the summer and we still only have the other i think society weekend. itself recognized that there was an unfair bias situation I, yeah, I, right it, it all moves slow it's reactive oh, sure. and it's slow um, I, I, I see it changing it, it's, it's it's getting there it's, it's i mean moving i see it direction. in my cases that that is changing but one of the things i did want to bring up with what you said is um and i used to have this talk with my kids all the time in in hillsdale justice project i get people in all the time with cps cases and i want to and the biggest problem is i'm going to get even with him so i want to do this no 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 <laughs> or i'm going to get even with her so i'm going to no 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 that's not what it's about here's the thing when you hate the other person that much you have to realize 50 percent of your child's blood is that person correct that's it and what does that say to the child if you hate that other person that much that means you're telling that child that you hate them 50 percent half of them yeah that is that is just wrong that is just wrong yeah i mean it, that's the jokes that i make towards my son I, he, he'll say something silly and i'd be like your face is ugly and he's like that, well i got your face dad <laughs> <laughs> you know like oh yeah, yeah. We, right. joke, we joke like that too but it, you know one thing we don't do is is talk ill of you know like my kids is mom yeah no. yeah i make it a point not to you know, i never did no, and, and, and if i do get to a point where i do want to make crack jokes like that i usually throw myself in there yeah exactly you know? you're yeah. making yourself sure. the yeah. target right good. good thing you got my blood because man do you smell funny you know yeah just, yeah it, but just stuff like that and th- this house bill what ultimately it does i mean the overall there's so much of it i mean we could sit here for well days. well tim you're 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 big on it i mean I'm i don't know if on it. yeah you you've been you're, you're telling me that you really want to support this bill what what is like one of the highlights you got to give me one but just give us three key points to this well first of all what this does is the the biggest point is it it levels the playing field in all of the court systems through the whole state hmm. this makes the judge have to follow this system 
Okay. See now, right now, you, how it is? Yeah, I was gonna say, what do you mean? Right now, how it is 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 we've got a system in place that everybody knows is so outdated that basically all these judges have added their own twists and turns to what they're ruling on, which usually comes from their own bias. Exactly. Exactly. Now, are you uh, saying there's not there's not a structure right now? I, I think there is a failing structure right now. Is what I'm saying. The, okay. the structure that was set up. I don't know what's in place right now. The structure that was set up in the early 70s, I believe, is when the when this all started. That's that's the that's when John and I talk about the breaking of the family nucleus. Mm-hmm. That's also the no child left behind policies. Yeah, that's when it all that that's yeah. when all the crap hit the fan. Yeah. Well, as we all know, 2018. 1970 there's a big difference in what's going on in society in the world and this system that they put in place is breaking yes and it's you know let's let's be honest look at the overcrowding of the jail that we hear about every day in this town i mean yeah i mean let's see how many people are in there for child support and what good are you doing your child if you're in jail yeah and what good is it stealing from peter to pay for all that well here's the thing i never understood and, and this happens in Hillsdale quite often. I've had quite a few apprentices because, let's face it, you're in construction, and you know as well as I do, most of the guys that are in construction have some sort of a felony because that's the only other place they can work when they've got a felony. So guys in my profession, we always see those guys all the time, right? So I had a couple of apprentices that both had children out of wedlock, and what would happen is they'd always wait until Friday night. They knew that there was a warrant out that they were behind on Tuesday, Wednesday, Mm-hmm. They'd always wait until Wednesday night after the courts were closed to pick the guys up. And I always thought that was odd until I realized it's because they're charging them for two days to stay in the jail. So, and the booking costs. And then if they don't get out of jail on Monday morning and they miss work and they get fired, how did that help the child? I never understood how that was in the best interest of the child. Well, right here, there's a key point. It says, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on point number four here, it looks like, because these other ones are important too, but redefines the role as best interest, interest of the child. Now, that, that catches my eye because, uh, Tim, I'm, I'm actually doing an investigation, or, or not an investigation, I guess you, I'm investigating uh, bylaws at Addison School District. And I'm looking at uh, investigating my child. Like, so a CPS comes knocking on, on the door at the, over at the school. Yeah, they have to introduce themselves. They have to uh, scan their ID. But when it's time to interview a child, the, the, it's up to the principal. And if the principal doesn't know his rights. Well, yeah, and this is the thing. The, it says that the principal becomes the local parentess in which they're supposed to leave their role as the disciplinarian and take on the role of what's in the best interest of the child. Now, how many of them can do that? Oh, how many people and, and how many of them know what the child? rights well, of the child know, are? Well, yeah, yeah, they don't know that they're the civil rights. They, they don't, don't know, know that they have a right to remain silent. Most of them don't right. know that they have a right to refuse to answer any questions. And, you know, and here's the child. You've got two authorities going, okay, uh, did your daddy hit you? Yep. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. The child needs to know, look, son. You can just not answer if you want to. No, well, listen. Uh, if, if you have that if, right, if that principal was acting in the best interest of the child, um, then I would assume he's acting in the best interest of the family unit. And if he's acting in the best best interest of the family unit, uh, the Fifth Amendment sounds like the best uh, advice. And That's then right, you and, have the and, right and to you, remain silent. And then, and then so you cannot you, be compelled. So I would, I would, if I was a principal, I'd say CPS, you can't do your investigation here. Because my other thing is. You know, even when it comes to things, probable cause. Yep. Fourth Amendment comes before the fifth. You're supposed to have probable cause before you start going and looking at things. And too many times I see this, uh, it's circumstantial evidence, not probable cause. It's this, well, somebody's getting even with somebody, so the mandatory, that happened to me. There was a teacher at the school that did not like me, did not like my family, did not like my daughter, and my daughter had two scratches on the back of her arm. Next thing I know, here comes CPS, come rolling into my yard, and they wanted to talk to the parents of my daughter, and I said, well, wait right here, I'll go pack her stuff. Right. And they didn't know what to do with that, but they weren't, I was, that wasted a lot of time and money and aggravated me for what because somebody wanted to get even Even. that was not a mandatory reporting uh, type situation Ah, tim i found i found why your bias situation in this Uh prohibits the parent whose custody is governed by court order from changing the legal child's legal residency to a location more than 80 miles away where am i moving to well (laughs) your child moved over 80 miles away well, yeah, right, exactly. Yes. You know, yep. and and that's it's a horror. I, my best friend. This happened to my best friend. His um, 
his ex, uh, and they were never married. They were just boyfriend, girlfriend, but his ex took his ch child. They, she got married to a guy that um, is successful in the Air Force. And they've been all around the states, but they moved up down to Florida. And I think it was Florida. It, well, the the court granted that, right? Sure. Because in it's the best terrible. interest of the children, they would have a better lifestyle, right? Uh, and that's what happened to him. Yeah. Well, well, one of the things I would like to see, though, is, and here's part of the problem. You know, we've got in the fourth article of the Constitution, it's called. There's a there's a clause in there called the full faith and credit clause, right? And this is the reason why my driver's license is good in Florida or in the other 49 states is because each state has to recognize the uh, certain um, uh, uh, acts and, and, and things of the courts from other states. We've already got that, and the federal government has the ability to define what acts have to be followed by Correct. each state, right? Mm -hmm. Which I don't understand how my CPL is not good in New Jersey <laughs> <It's good laughs> under, that here, same, right. hey. under that same full faith and credit clause, but that's neither here nor there. What I'm talking about is there needs to be something within the full faith and credit clause under the fourth um, article of the Constitution where if, let's say, a child does have to move more than 80 miles away, that the court decision moves with the child and is governed by that. Sure. I think that would be the best thing because that would fall under the fourth article. That would fall under the full faith and credit. And just like my marriage license, if I move to Florida, my marriage license is still good. And anything that would happen with my wife and I, if I was to die in Florida, she would still get all my stuff, even though we were married in Michigan, right? Mm -hmm. So the full faith and credit clause of the Constitution should follow right along with this as well and if that happened then you wouldn't run into a situation like what sure. you ran into because it would be governed by the same court yep or okay. that that Does, that decision that I, decree always, would have to go. I thought it always was governed by the same court I'm really surprised to hear that you, they opened up another case in another state yeah anytime the new the the what's enforced right now is 100 miles you can you can be within well I think you can't go over 100 miles okay yeah. So they're actually they're actually roping it in so you're staying closer, which again it's the best interest of the child. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean it's yeah. it's the best interest of the family unit. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, let's let's just say that. See, that's the thing that the government is taking control of as far as what I'm seeing as locus parentis, and that I have a I have a problem with that because who knows the best interest of my child? I do. Exactly. Right. Or who has the best interest of your child? You do. Right. I, correct. Not the government. Exactly. Okay, and that's and there's a pro, that's why but I have a the problem. The government's with not the one that procreated. I was the one that procreated, and I procreated with my wife so that we could move our norms and mores to our children. That's how we procreate. What are the mores and the norms of the government? Right, exactly. Other than liberal bull crap that I don't want well, indoctrinated also, into my children. Also, John, in this bill, um, in the, I don't like this statement, uh, Tim. What they put here, I'm sure it's well defined in the in the bill in itself. The bill. But it says defines. Um, su substantially, I can't even say the word right, substantially uh, equal parenting time to provide for alternating periods of time w with each parent, not to exceed 200, uh, 200 overnights per year for one parent unless one parent agrees otherwise. That's almost 50-50. Yeah. That's crazy. That's like real close. I mean, like I can't, I get four, four days out of the month, you know, so like can you imagine if I got like 12? You know, like that's right. crazy. That's, that's. Um, and I'm sure it's written, defined a little bit better in the bill than what this statement's saying, because this statement's kind of um, stretching. But uh, can you imagine if you got to see your child 100 days out of the year? That, that would that, That's crazy. That, that means you would have a good influence on your child. Now, see, I, and come that's from, the point. I come from a different side here. Uh, I've never been divorced, didn't have any children out of wedlock. I had, God blessed me, <laughs> with three girls. There was times I did not want to spend with them. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get that? <laughs> uh, pack a suitcase and just take a month-long trip by yourself and not have that contact with them, and you'll come back really appreciating <laughs> that. that. I promise happen. you. I so promise it you. says it requires courts to advise parents in custody dispute of presumption of joint legal custody. Um you know, you don't get no advice. You don't get any. No. You don't get any advice of understanding of how this stuff works. Mm -hmm. None of it, especially when you're 18. 
uh, and you're a punk, and you don't have well, no critical thinking, well, no, isn't no that, morals. But nothing. isn't that part of the problem? I mean, you weren't adult enough to even have a child, and yet now you're getting hit with all this stuff that you're supposed to just understand. Well, now let's just stop right there and look at what's happening in today's society. I mean, we got girls that are 14 years old going in and having kids now. I mean, yeah. that was something that... How about 14 years old going to have an abortion? Well, oh. either which way. I mean, yeah. so you, huh. we're talking at 18, we didn't know... When mm-hmm. I had my twins, yeah. I was... My, oh, you know, my, my girlfriend was 16, and I was 17. We're procreating. I mean, right? yeah. Jesus. So, so now you've got these kids having kids that are even younger. Yeah. And right. now you've got them whose parents are probably nine times out but, of ten, and I'm not stereotyping The thing here, is, but, I don't understand, is these 14-year-old girls that are having children, um, some of those dads are 18 and older. Why aren't they in prison? I want... I, you know, to be honest with you... I, okay, regardless. So so the very first thing is saying it's requiring courts to um, to directly uh, recognize that co-parenting, equal parenting time is the best interest of the child. Now, I don't like these bills in general because I hate the idea that I got to defend my parenting rights. It's absolutely horrible. It's like marijuana laws. I, I don't even think we need to like put a marijuana bill out there because we just leave it alone, right, from the first place. this I think this needs to be left alone in the first place. But... But if we're going to have these laws and stuff, this they're saying the court has to recognize. So these judges have to recognize that equal parenting time is the best interest of the child. That's first and foremost on this. That's a whole paradigm change. Yeah. And I understand where you're coming from. Just leave it alone. But the problem is this can't be left alone. And, and not at this, this point, is right? Gone, this has gone so far down the other side of the mountain it needs to be brought back. Exactly. No, I, I, I totally understand that now at this point. Yeah. That, that's the reality we live in, yeah. right? But, I mean, like, this is... Uh, it's a you know think about this because we're all dads right we're the th- there's three dudes here we're all I'm dads not, I'm not yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean the idea that we got to defend our fatherhood the kids don't know that exactly idea. you know what I mean like just the idea of it is just ludicrous right so the the idea that we got to steal from Joey down the road or Cindy down the road to defend our fatherhood is just bizarre way of thinking and then when when you try to present this to someone we're the outsiders dividing people you know like give me a break well try to present this to people that are on the other side of this bill than what i am yeah you mean the people that uh use uh emotion and use uh threat or like ways to get back revenge yeah you know see one of the other one of the other problems i have is we're putting it we're we're actually putting a band-aid on a sucking chest wound even with this yeah exactly because one of the things that really needs to be fixed is no 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 fault uh, uh, divorces. Yep. There needs to be a reason for divorce. There needs to be someone that has created uh, an, an infidelity or created a situation in which a divorce is necessary. Well, they don't even recognize there needs that to in be, court. I know, but that's what I'm saying. This no fault divorce has created a lot of these broken families. Yep. It has. If I if I, if I can just get if I can get married today and then two weeks later go, yeah, I hate your face. So and that and I found somebody else that's sexier. Um, then all of a sudden I can get divorced and get married again. No, 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 no. It, this is part of what's created this 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 idea that. Um, uh, you can just go around procreating with anybody you want to. Everything's good. Everything's cool. I, now I recognize, um, you know, I'm not a religious person. Now I recognize why pastors require people to go through classes and stuff before they marry. And them. the morality. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're trying the to teach. The morality right? behind not creating life. I, my thing is, I, I tell kids this all the time. You know what? It's, us old people aren't just trying to keep you from having sex and having fun. That's not what it's about. Have all the fun you want, but do not bring a human life into this world so recklessly without thought. You cannot do that. That is so immoral. It is not even funny. Mm-hmm. You cannot do that. Child didn't ask to be born. You got to stop. That's yeah, right. I was immoral like four times. <laughs> well, I know you are. <laughs> well, yeah. I think a lot of the the CPS stuff that we're running into in this area too is based on a lot oh, of this. I, you know, I didn't even think about that, Tim. This mm-hmm. would help alleviate a lot of that CPS well, yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, because this mm-hmm. also opens it back up to the shared parenting comes if. Uh, if you don't want to be a part of your kid's life, let's just say, for example, you don't want to be that 50-50 shared part. Right. It opens the door for your family to be your 50-50. 
Right. Well, what I was thinking is it, it cre you know, like this creates a paradigm shift for um, disgruntled parents, right? Exactly. You but know, a lot of what I see at the HJP is people using the CPS system and using the family court system to get even right. with someone else. That's right. And they're the same people that want to sit back and complain about too much government involvement, but yet you're the one that's creating the government involvement by trying to get even with somebody right. by using the court system. I'm not system saying this is going to like clear them. it up because it won't. But I'm just saying this it might should like, alleviate some of the problems. Yeah, 10, 20, 30 percent. You know, I would think that, you know, just with the shift the idea that we got 50 50 parenting. Right. Right. So uh, this also sh talks about the idea of having 50 50 dealing with legal. Yep. Which I uh, didn't mention medical in here. So, like, I'm assuming that that would be a part of it, but I'm just assuming it. So um, it mentions it in the bill. That's what I'm wondering. It doesn't mention it yeah, on the key points it's here. It's in the bill. But it mentions it on, on the legal situation. And it, it also requires the court to really dig deep for evidence of being a bad parent. So, like, um, so I see on this bill here, if you, like, got domestic violence case on yourself, so they have to really pull, like, deep in order to consider you a bad parent. Um, yeah. Where before a judge could look at your shoes and go, oh, "You got dirty shoes. I don't. I don't well, think you're a good." Well, the parent. other thing is with the domestic violence thing too. Even that gets abused in oh, these it does. situations. Oh, no, 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 yeah. Because now it's a competition well, for who gets the well, most be, most money for the child. Be, be careful, and who gets John. the most love for the be child. Be careful when you say that, John, because you know we're going to get. We're talking generalizing here. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah you got to be careful. Yeah, here. yeah, I understand. We, we, I understand. We do you have real victims? There's, I know there are real victims, and I I've seen the real victims, and I've protected the real victims. Just, I'm just I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just saying. There's also people that use the. Uh, it, it's no different. Are there children that are hurt that need to have CPS protect them? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But the problem is they're too busy running after all the all the all the false things because people are using them to get even with somebody. Somebody's using them as a battering ram. It's the same thing with the the PPOs. Are there people that are abused? Yes. Are there people that need to be protected? Yes. But the problem is you got so many people that are using that PPO that that PPO. Uh, uh, law to get even with someone or so that now I got a PPO on them now I can go to court and say they're a bad parent so now I need all all the child's law I mean honestly this fourth oh go ahead Tim you want to talk well this this brings up a point where where John had brought something up it says this bill eliminates a provision that prohibits the court from modifying or amending its previous judgments or orders or issuing a new order that would change the established custodial environment of a child unless clear and convincing evidence established custodial and or I'm sorry, that is in the best interest of the child. So back clear to what we were convincing. saying. So now now they're not gonna just be able to come at this and, and redo an order. Yeah, because like, somebody because, because somebody complained. Right. Or the way this is the way it's worded would be if they were even if they were to move because now with this being in place you can't be with you can't be any farther than 80 miles apart so i mean now we live in the southern tier county so yeah you could wind up in a different state but i don't think that they're going to be far enough away to allow another court to intervene no so the same court oh, I order still saying. yeah that makes sense provides, you, right. you're never too far away from that court system right right that district or and, that uh, whatever you whatever you want to call and it pretty much that's what that's calling out so that that's the first time i i was looking for that when you brought that up okay. i was trying I, to find I think, it i think the that's a good point i think the fourth or the fourth highlight here should actually be number one and that's redefining the role of the best interest of the child that is and it's it's in it's in really that's here. key to this whole thing that's, yeah that's the, the key the of this whole that's bill. the paradigm shift yeah well, that who, is the paradigm who has shift. the best interest and obviously both parents have have that right they, sure, they both 50 have 50 percent of that child's blood is either parent right so they have the best interest of the child so if we can give as much as we could possibly give with having laws in place to the parent i think that's better and like you said, John, let that unit work it out. Let those parents be parents. Yeah. And and, and, and it's not easy. It's not well, easy. Yeah, we're not going to say this is this not is, easy. Sure. This is, yeah, this is a cakewalk. When you're, when you're a divided <laughs> family, it's even harder. And, it, you know, I've been married 34 years coming up or yeah, 34 years coming up on uh, in, in September. It's not easy. I mean. Uh, my wife and I, we've never talked divorce. We've talked murder a couple times, but never divorce. <laughs> and, it, and it has not been easy. No, I mean, I've been married, what, John, seven years? And boy, I, I seriously struggle with it. Yeah, I really it's do. It's tough. It's tough. And too many kids don't understand that. They go into it completely... Uh, blind. Some of them don't even get married. They just jump into bed and have it's, 10 it's, seconds it's a, of it's fun. It's a blind and, situation, yeah. And, well, wow. And not only that, but when you have the court intervening and doing some of the stuff they do and creating the animosity. Yeah, it creates resentment. Yeah. 
yeah that also starts to take a role in your new relationship also yes. also because it, now it, your your new wife or oh, oh your, yeah your yeah because yeah, you got wife. a wife right you got a yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in a so now so part of your income isn't coming to help our unit it's going somewhere well, else well let's let's put it real simple my ex-wife makes a good salary her husband makes a good salary mm-hmm. my wife my wife now makes a good salary and i get half of mine yep well them two good salaries also get the other half of mine yep so where does the 50 50 now i've always said for a long time if you want it to be about that you take half of her money and you well, take they, half of my money. They, they, and I well, they, the I, I, and sure. this is this is more recent. They do it on a sliding scale of per, of percentage now. So they do tag. Uh, I, I would say it's more equal in today's society than it ever has been before. Uh, but uh, I would say when we're, we're talking about money at this point now, uh, I don't know if how when's the last time you went to court with the money, Tim? February. Uh, February and. Uh, there's supposed to be a sliding scale between on what your wife makes, not what her husband makes, what she makes, and then what you make. That's what they claim, and they scale it that way. But here's and here's part of my problem with that, and I hopefully this bill takes this into consideration. Okay, mom and dad split up; they have child A. Mom marries someone else; dad marries someone else. Those step parents are just as much part of that child's life. Yeah, they don't as the two things. parents, and they that needs to be taken not, into that's consideration. That's not today because, for an example, if uh, say we're going to court for custody battle, they don't listen to the step parents' uh, testimony. They don't listen to yeah. them, and and that's that's sad because that uh, my daughter married a man that had a child out of wedlock, and um. A t- the way they've dealt with it is just uh, absolutely amazing how they've done it. And uh, my grandson now is is uh, 13, um, uh, very well adjusted, very uh, uh, mannered young man, very smart young man. But that didn't come without a lot of work from not just my son-in-law, but from my daughter as well. Sure. That is. She is just as much a mother to him, just as I am just as much a grandfather to him right? as, as a his biological right. yep. grandfather. So these courts, what they do is they create resentment. You don't think like, you know, I, and I would say it's less, the resentment's starting to get less, I would think. But I mean, like in the 90s, you don't think a stepmother would resent that child because of the way they're getting ranked sure. in the system. And this is, I mean, when was, when was the uh, story Cinderella written, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, evil stepsisters and right. stepmothers. Um, this has been uh, an eons old problem. Uh, and why are we creating a situation that would cause that to happen more? Why are we causing a situation that would cause regret that would cause this anim- animosity right. cause more friction? That's yeah. right. From well, a, from a step parent, to the stepchild that's that's that we shouldn't be doing that well let's just look at it i mean let's look at it in today's society with kids and the things that go on in schools and the things that go on everywhere else don't tell me that this stuff happening is not kids acting out in in this scenario no it's absolutely it's, it's got to be connected yeah I it has to, to be connected. i went to 13 schools i was suspended uh pretty much my whole sixth seventh and eighth grade years Shock. i threw and a, now you still use double negative yeah, because of it yeah <laughs> N- ninth grade i threw a book at a teacher and called him a dick and walked out i lost all my credits in my ninth grade year all right yeah i know this is because it starts with the morality that we always talk about, sure, John, and, it, and that building of the family unit was just never there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a lot of kids that are acting out is because they don't have the morality, they don't have family structure, they don't have a family unit, and kids don't learn it by being told it. And you know, right. they, they, they learn it by watching it and living it. And that's why, like, I think programs like Big Brother and Big Sister and stuff, I think some of those can be very good, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it can't. It's, it can't it, substitute it, for the family it doesn't. itself. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. Right. It's almost like gangs. Gangs are good for people sometimes when they join a gang because that's their family. And most unit, of them right? join gangs because, because they, they lack a family right. unit, yeah, and they have a sense of morality in gangs. And you know, the, like it's it's within honor the gang. among thieves. Yeah, yeah honor among thieves. Is. Right. <laughs> there so, it is. You know, so, look at Congress. Oh, I said that out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thin blue line, right? So uh, no, there's there's honor amongst amongst that gang. So that's why a lot of these people kind of 
gravitate towards a unit, a family unit. And I can see why they would do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this, this. I mean, and that is part of our gang problem. I mean, if we in the inner city, we didn't have a gang problem with when within the inner city, parents stayed together. But as soon as we fissured the family yeah, and 70s. broke them apart, that, look that, what that happened. Early 70s. The gangs yep. just exploded. That's because children are always looking for a place to belong, looking for a place that has their best interest, looking for a place that will protect them, looking for a place that the people love them. Awesome. You know, it's, you just mentioned they're looking for a place for the best interest of the children. Mm-hmm. Why is it that even the children know that? Yeah. But yet the courts have The it. courts don't figure that out. Yeah. You know, some of these kids, like some, like what we've gone through, my daughter, she's going, she's going to be, tw- well, she just turned 11, going on 27, <laughs> but it's about that time, <laughs> you know, she knows where she feels more comfortable in her own opinion, right? That's not swayed one way or another. We don't sit there and try to corks her to say, oh, we know you want to live here or not there, but the judge doesn't have, doesn't listen to that child in their feelings or their emotions. Well, I, I, I think children could easily be swayed in other ways, too. I'm not saying you're doing that, but, like, well, maybe my child's got access to video games at my house more so than, say, another house. But I don't think they're going to say that in front of a judge. If they were, if they were, if a judge were to honestly ask a child. I don't know, man. I mean, you, that, that, the thing, the, the way I look at it is this. A child can't make decisions. All right. That's why I disagree with children having abortions. This is an argument John and I had, and I think I got the upper hand in that one. <laughs> he, he thinks a lot. Yeah, that's the only thing I've ever got the upper hand is this a child having an abortion, right? Like a 14-year-old, 15-year-old. They're too young to make a decision, True. right? They don't, yep. they don't. That's why you're a guardian. That's why you're a parent until the age of 18. You know, they can't make decisions, period. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you can't sign a contract. Yeah, they can't sign community. contracts. That's why they should not, not the be. Age of that's why they shouldn't be questioned by anybody legally. No, without absolutely. a parent. Period. And I see this all the time. I see uh, school resource officers come in and question children without a parent, and they do they do it under this locus uh, parentis um, provision. No, no, no. The, the school principal did not have my child. The school principal does not deal with my child when she's up all night with a, with a fever. The yeah. school principal doesn't deal with my child when my child uh, uh, on their birthday and is excited. I, I mean, think I about, do. Th- Tim, think about this for a second. Just using power, just like a judge, like picture that kind of power, man. You look at the power that you and I have, right? So we've we've both have kids out of wedlock, and or I, I did at least. I think you you have kids, obviously, that with other women. Uh, it, Think about how we didn't have kids with other men. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I like biologically earlier. that's a little I, hard to do. I don't but. think. Uh, no. Uh, think about like how like shysters we can be. Like guys going out to try to pick up women and and to, and to, to to have sex with them and stuff like that. Think about the power that we have uh, of doing that. Again, now, and that's why CSC Fourth Degree came about in the state yeah, of Michigan because well, well, just being in a position of authority over someone just, can coerce just think about them. just think about how easy it is for us to manipulate people. People in general, like if I, if I'm a sales rep, Especially right? Especially an authority. Being a, being a salesman, you have an, an ability to manipulate a situation, right? Right. Now think, take that. It, it, think about how easy it is right now, because I'm 40, right, and you're roughly the 39, same. 39. Yeah. Yeah. 39. Th- think about working with your 18 year olds on the construction job, right? <laughs> think about <laughs> yeah. this for a second. They're adults. They're adults, right, Tim? Yep. They're adults. <laughs> supposed, supposed to be, to be yeah. right? You're the boss, right? Think about how easy it is to manipulate that 18 year old. It don't matter what it is. Go rotate the ice. Sure. Right, yeah. you know, like think about how easy it is. In the military, we send people after squelch spray. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, go, like, toe I, line. I, I, yeah. I, I was eighteen working Good at squares. McDonald's. I tell them to go get the seeds for the buns. <laughs> you know, like think about how and e- they do, they would. Yeah, they? I told them to rotate the ice, so they'd go into the ice cooler and rotate the ice. Oh. You know, like think well, you about want that new stock on top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, think about how easy it is to manipulate an eighteen year old. Can you imagine what it is to an eight year old? Sure. Okay, and picture the kind of power that a judge has. If a judge is biased in any situation, he will be biased. I every relationship counseling I went to, there was a bias situation. Well, in the eighties, and I'll throw this out there, you know, in the eighties we saw a huge, huge amount of um, a witch hunt on anything a child said was true, and so we were throwing all kinds of people in prison for uh, uh, molestation and abuse of children, when in fact. Nothing happened at all. It was the questioning and the way that the child psychologist in that position of authority 
posed questions to the children. I'm not saying there isn't situations. And it wasn't that the children sure. lied. It's just that they. It's the way the question was posed to them. So we had a lot of people that went to the prison in in the 80s that were absolutely innocent. Yeah, it, and, and that's a travesty. And, and we that know that ever we know have that it's better to, to let a thousand guilty men go free than it is to convict one innocent man. So we already know that. Yep. Yeah. So there's no way that I don't think an adult, uh, particularly one of authority like a judge, should be. Uh, or a cop or a principal should be questioning a, a, a child. I just don't see how without well, the parent in situ- present. In a situation like that, I understand. But what Tim's saying is, and I can see his point, the judge should be able to speak to the child uh, not, without speak, either parent sure. just to get it. Now, that doesn't mean that that judge should put uh, 100% or 10 per, or 50% or 70% of what the child says into his decision. I'm talking about interrogating. Right, right. right. We're just, no. we're talking about the child picking where they're most comfortable. Sure. Right. Which, but I still think that that, that does have a bearing because the child does have to feel comfortable. That's true. And so there needs to be, and, and, and then maybe if they say, well, I feel better at my dad's house. Okay. Well, why is that? Find out, talk with the mother, you know, the child feels more comfortable at dad's house because of these issues. Are these some of the things that, that we can provide at your house? And, sure. don't, and don't get me wrong. I think the people in this system here, uh, like I know a lot of people believe in the corruption idea. I, I think the people that are in these systems, in the front of the court systems, I think the women that work in the office and stuff, I think they all mean well. I think they really do have good intentions. Yes. You know, I do. I don't think and we any, know where that road leads. Yeah. I, I don't think any of them are bad people per se. I, people, I, they're human. Humans, right? They're so, human. so I, I really do think they're trying, and they think they, be, they believe that they're trying to make a better society. Uh, and whether they are or not is up for question, right? So, I'm, I'm being critical of that. It, I, and we should be. I, I, I think we're supposed to be, right? As right. a good citizen, right? And we should. Be. It, this bill, according to the highlights. What I really like is changing that paradigm of what's the best interest of the child. Yep. And who has that best interest? That's the biggest thing I see in that bill is that that change, that paradigm Now, we didn't read the... John and I haven't read the bill. So, you know, we're definitely going to read the bill since we did the show. I'm sure Sure. of it. but um, Or at least read most of it. So, um, changing that, that the best interest of the child... Or I'm going to look up the headline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the, I'm going to read the keep. keep you just keep backing off farther, farther, well, farther. Well, I mean, I don't know when it's go, it's going to it's coming up here soon, right? Yeah, we, if they don't. Uh, I mean, that's a big bill, is, dude. This is going to hit here coming up within the next couple of weeks, and if it dies in the next couple of weeks, it's dead for a year. They're saying. So. I mean, I still haven't read well, the Hills Delk City Charter. What I've got hmm. here is House Bill House Bill uh, 4691 in 2017. That's when it was originated. That's when it originated. And then right here, history, history of the bill, uh, 5-31-2017, introduced by Representative Jim uh, uh, Runstead. Yep. Uh, we have to five, figure out where he's from. 5-31-2017, it's 729 pages, read it first time, and then 5-31-2017, referred to committee on a uh, judiciary bill electronically, and then 6-6-2017, reproduced reported with and then to 620 I'm, I'm not gonna lie i don't know if i'm gonna have time to read this whole bill i mean like i'm read. still reading bylaws so of addison school district when i called when i called uh because i i believe this was talked about on facebook yep yep you were actually and you were somebody, actually brought into that. yeah somebody asked asked me so i called lloyd hoiser's office and asked him about, about it and he said well it happens to be on the floor right now and it's had it's it's been through committee What's and everything. What's Eric's position on it? It's on. I didn't ask. Oh, yeah, we should. We should I have ask. asked and I haven't got the call back yet. Oh, you oh got really? Call back? I have not got the call back. Oh, oh well, it's Sunday, so hopefully we get the call back tomorrow. But I do have his personal cell phone number in my phone, so I will be calling tomorrow. There you go. Uh, Jim Runstead is he is out of White Lake. Oh, he, oh he's in Oakland County. Oakland, yeah. Let's see, forty fourth district. That's where I'm from, John. Mm-hmm. Township, Milford, Springfield. Well, Lake. that's just west of where I'm from. Yeah, and that's probably where. A ton of these problems. Oh, that's, I mean, there's a ton oh, of problems. Oh, oh. Well, for, first and there. foremost, that's upper class. Mm-hmm. Just so you guys know, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you guys know, but that's like, uh, uh you know, two thirds upper class, and, and I would say lots of millionaires live out there. It's a beautiful area, mm-hmm. and uh, it's very, probably very Republican there. So, well, well but, it's funny. It's funny you bring that up, though, John, because that's one thing I've said all along in all of this is, doesn't matter if they're millionaires, no. or slum dogs, slum nope. 
their children are still children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the I kids mean, should know whether they're right, rich or right. poor. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't. They think, really shouldn't. You know, honestly, I, I grew up poor and didn't know it. Right. <laughs> I grew up poor and thought we were rich. Right. Most most kids don't. Your age. The, the, yeah. The money doesn't really set in until until the media really hits them, right? Yep. So well, when I was growing up, we we never we might not have got everything we wanted, but we had everything we needed. And like I say, we we saw we felt bad for other people because we thought we were rich. <laughs> yep. that's, that's, that's we how didn't it know is. any different right that's yeah. but that's you know that's one thing that's always been a, a a thorn in my side in this child support thing too is maybe i make a hundred thousand dollars a year and you make twenty thousand dollars a year right so why should it cost me 10 times more to raise my child than it does yours because at the end of the day it costs the same to raise it a costs child. The same yeah it costs the same money yeah so so you're gonna basically this system the way it was written before has completely become completely monetized. Well, it's it's become monetized and also it's a what makes a person what makes a guy or or a woman want to be successful. I, I didn't even think about that. This actually takes that monetary out of it, yeah. John. Yeah, the way completely. that it's presented here, yeah. right? Right. Because yeah. if you got equal parenting time, then you can't really tag them. That's for why money. I'm saying that, right. that paradigm change is huge in that fourth point. Oh point, man, that's can huge. you imagine the the, all change. the people that collect money now? I mean, whether it be I would say it's probably majority women. I'm just sure, guessing sure. here, right? Yeah. So, but like, can you imagine the shift change that all these women and they they have to not collect that money no more? And what happens? Well. That's gonna. Ha- I mean, it's only a matter of time. It sounds like it's gonna happen it's eventually. It's gonna happen, but that's that's only fair, like right. My wife had to work. Yeah. There's no reason why other. Well, I mean, hey, man, if you want equal responsibility, my right? kids' right. mother, my kids' mother had to work. Yeah. There's no reason why other kids' mothers. Well, I mean, in today's reality, happen, in right? today's society, I mean, it's it's not like it was where mom stayed at home no. back in the day. And yeah, when I grew up, my mom was it, home yeah. all the time. Sure, and it's not. She like chose that. to be a housewife. Today's society, the way the world is today, it takes two incomes in any household. Well, my wife, my wife's problem was she married a bum. <laughs> if she'd have married somebody good, she could have been a stay-at-home yeah, mom. <laughs> hey, I'm in the same shoes. I can't really laugh. Yeah. I'm laughing with you, yep, not yep, at you. Yeah, that's right. We're <laughs> yeah. laughing with you. I feel bad for my wife because she married the bum. She was the one that married. I married up. She married well, down. <laughs> so this this bill, you know, obviously it's close to your heart. It's close to my heart too. I mean, obviously I ran into the situation many times too with having kids out of wedlock. Uh, and being ringed to the system, uh, I truly believe if you if the highlights of this bill are to be true, uh, I, I I could see how my situation would have been a little bit better, a little bit easier, and I would have had a better relationship with my children. Now, my two oldest, my twenty two year old and twenty year old, we don't have um, a relationship. Well, we I mean we have a relationship. It's I would say it's not as good as Connor's or, or London's, mm-hmm. right? So like or Samantha's. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, obviously, if this was in place, maybe the opportunity of having a better relationship. Well, this be isn't going to fix all the ills. I mean, no, this, that's isn't, right, this that's isn't right. going to. This isn't like a, you said. It's a band aid. Yeah, it's not going to fix everything, but it is. Uh, it's encouraging to see that it's a step in the right direction. Right. It's going the right. You way. know, what, also what this might do. You know, we need to get that idea if we sign up for welfare or WIC or whatever that they, they force you into the system. We need to get rid of that. I don't know if this bill talks about that, but it really should get rid of that. It should because it's not monetized anymore. Well, yeah, that's well, th- exactly right. But I was going to say that it will actually, this will actually try, like that paradigm shift will change people's thought in the idea, we don't even have to go to court. We mm-hmm. don't even have to have a court order. We're just going to do what's natural, which is, because today's natural is go to court and get money, right? Right. So, <laughs> well, but, you know, here's the other thing we got to look at too, and this is something else that is unfair. If I have a child and I'm a father, and I'm down on my luck and work, and I go up to sign up for things. I don't get anything because I'm a right. male. But my wife, if she's single with children, she can go up there, and not only will they give her everything she has, she needs, they'll actually sign up to take me to court. And take your money. And take my money, too. Mm-hmm. The money you I, don't have. Right. So it should be the same way. If the father has the children and he needs state assistance, then they, okay, to make it fair, then we need to go after mom yep or we just need to stop monetizing this whole thing well what i noticed and encourage people to get the economy going and to work there there also was a change of guard when i was in the system because i went through the system through 96 to approximately 2006 just approximately um i seen a changing of guard then uh i seen i had for the first you know several years i had old women i'm 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 
just going to say it. I had old women you got something against that women. were like, that came in into the 70s. They came in in the yeah, 70s. from the 70s. Right? Sure. So yeah, like- That they, was the end of their career. Yeah, I caught the tail end of their career. And they hate it. I, I mean, I had a hell dealing with those people. And then when the change in the guard, it was a little bit better. I'm not going to say it was greatest. But I'm just there's a couple different variables that that could have been. I mean, it could have been that they didn't really hate people. It's just they were old and crotchety. I'm old and crotchety. My kids tell me about it now. <laughs> sure. I'm not well, near as mean, fun as I used to be. I mean, it's not um, a physical job, right? Right. Let's but be the honest. other thing is, it's just like, and I get a lot of, and here's part of my problem. I get a lot of police officers tell me, well, if you seen everything I'd see, you'd be jaded too. Well, my problem is, if you're that jaded, then maybe you should quit. Right. Um, if you're that jaded, you need to quit. But the problem is, we never force people out of those positions when they're that jaded. So, I understand. They see things like when you have a family counselor. Long. If you had a family counselor that had the mindset of what it was in the '70s when this all started, can you imagine what dealing with that? I mean, it's it's a nightmare. No, yeah. And no. I had that for a long time. Um, my my last person I had to deal with that was part of that old guard. I was telling John about this. This was this happened to me like last year, approximately. I had a a woman that dealt with the money part of our case, and she was part of the old guard. Every time I called her, it was like bitches can be man i mean like it was like she was the i i mean i don't really talk a lot foul about a lot of people but i tell you what she was foul to me every time mm -hmm. i've ever called her and i had to call her a lot and every time i called her she was completely rude and super aggressive just she was such a mean person did you ever send her chocolate no i should have no i well i'm never going to send her <laughs> chocolate <laughs> so okay so when i got off my case when i was done with my case tim I was like i'm going to call this woman and just tell her how much of a bitch she really was you know i was going to call by the time I got the caller, she just retired. <laughs> I'm like, dang, I can't find her on Facebook or nothing. Should have sent her them chocolate. Yeah, I was, I, I, you know, God bless her retirement because really I shouldn't have even called and said anything, but I just wanted her to know how much I, <laughs> like much she you loved her. Yeah, like how much <laughs> wrong she did me, right? So like, um, you know, I, God bless that that I have happened. Your picture on right? a dartboard. I, yep. I have to let it go. I, yeah, I have to let it go, right? Yeah, so that's, uh, part of, that's part of growth. <laughs> so I did see, I did see a change in the guard. I did see the change in the guard for the better for dads, um, just in general for men, uh, you know, but. Uh, but still, we're still not at a to point. Be good for the children. That's, well, for the family not, unit. Yeah. Right. Right. And, you know, and, but and when it's good for the children, it is good for the family unit. Okay. Yeah. But that's fair. To say, but that's the line they use in in, in the court systems. What's good for the children? Right. The fact of the matter is, let's let's change that. And what's good for the family unit yeah. is what I'm saying. Well, before we get a lot of people mad at us, we do we have said a lot. Too late. That <laughs> it's, well, that's for sure. But. You know, this isn't just about dads. No, no, of there, course. There are, you know, yeah. there, there, this is not just a, hey, let's every guy in the in the state call and, and get this, you know. Yeah, it's, this, there, you know, I, there is. There's some women that come to the HJP that have, uh, you know, they've been raising their children and they've been working. They're not single, they're not stay at home moms. They're single moms that are working two and three jobs because some deadbeat is not well, paying. Well, let's, let's be real. Some, this, this was all established because some deadbeats weren't doing what they're supposed to be doing right. right so this is why this was established in the first place because we had dads weren't taking care of their families right but the problem is they generalize too much instead right. of going after the deadbeats they went after all well right. what they did is they, they can't go after the deadbeats because you can't find them so then they come after the guys you that can't are being get, involved you can't get blood out of a turnip correct you right. just can't and then, but, then when they get thrown you know like me felony and the, well i i'm fortunate enough i think the longest i ever spent for for child support was uh 14 days in jail but guess who had to pay for that yeah, the taxpayers. the taxpayers. Yeah, I stole from everybody, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. You know, like it's ridiculous. I didn't like, technically steal from everybody, but well, I've yeah. seen I've seen a lot of girls, you know, I mean the post that uh I was commenting on and, and Rutan got tagged in and that's when I kinda threw this out there mm -hmm. and and uh the girl I think she asked John if, if he had if he knew anything about it. And yeah, and I told her I hadn't heard hadn't heard a word. Right. Didn't know anything about well, it. I haven't heard about this either until you mentioned it to him. Well then a couple of posts later she was that same girl was talking about how she wishes that her kid's dad would be involved. Right. This is going to put response. This is going to also turn yeah. a responsibility leaf. I mean, this is going to, this, this may give more dads the opportunity. Yeah, because it's going to be involved. easier for them to be involved. Yeah, because right? you, don't, you don't have to have the animosity of, yeah, of no. what is created. Yeah, and that's, that's right. right. That's in, right. in that system, a lot of people, you know, I'm going to hear a lot of the defensive on it that, oh, you just don't understand. And it's not just a paycheck. And, 
Yep, I don't understand. You're right, I don't, (laughs) because this system has created a level of animosity between people and society. It goes back to what Lindsay's uh, judge said, just make it easy on dad. That's right. That's that's, that's what it is. Or Or make it easy on the other. Yeah, or by mom, right? Make it easy on the other person to be involved. Make it easy for them. Yeah, yeah. It's real simple. You parent together. I can call you, you can call me. Let's parent together. Done. We I don't, don't have care. to argue in front of the child. Yeah. We I don't, don't, I don't. I mean, if they, even if they're, let's just say the argument is school supplies, and I don't have the money, and she does, well, then just go buy the school supplies, right? Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's I that mean, simple. It's going to happen, right? And, and that's the biggest thing, you know. So I lose half my paycheck. You get the half of my paycheck, and then I still got to provide for the time that she's with us. So you know, I, I mean, it, well, that, well, this is making it to where it's more that, that, that this, we're going to rule that out, right? right? This eliminates that. So hey, it, you know what? She's with you 50% of the time. She's with us well, 50% she, of the time. She's uh, 200 to 165 is what they're looking at here. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's that's pretty, that that's, that's crazy. Huge. That's huge. Coming from a from a dad that didn't get to have my children all the, only but two to four days a month, that's so big. Mm-hmm. Uh, the influence could be a, a world of a difference. We, you know, huge. I mean, it's just going to, my influence is going to be there. And it also, I think this actually teaches uh, young men or young women um, how how to be more of a parent you think if i had to be a part of my more of an adult yeah yeah right yeah can you can you imagine if i was forced into a position where i had to have my child more time or like i wanted more time but i mean can you imagine like i I, if i had that opportunity and i had more time with them would i not become more adultish quicker that's what i say it's gonna it's gonna breed a new level of responsibility i mean you yeah you are not gonna be able to run away from this And and there are clauses in here where if they do, that there's some pretty stiff guidelines, and they're gonna, you know, there are clauses. I mean, I don't there, think you so. can make a father be a father. I don't think I don't think there's anything you can do to force that. Okay, upon well, well, first off, first off, I had I was in I was in three deliver I was in delivery room three times with my wife. Every time those babies come out, I looked. There was not an instruction manual on either one on any of them. They didn't come with one. Mine didn't either. So the there was nothing that told me how to be a father. The only thing that told me how to be a father was watching my father be a father that's what taught me how to be a father mm-hmm. and a husband and a man this is the probably the crux of the issue we've got too many boys that are 26 27 28 years old still boys yep because they didn't have any men to learn how to be men they didn't have any fathers to learn how to be fathers they didn't have husbands to their mothers to learn how to be good husbands yeah i'm, I'm trying to push connor into a skill set now and i can't get i can't get nothing out of him I'm, I'm, I'm getting scared because he's 12 years old boys grow up to be male they don't grow up to be men yeah so they have to be made into men <laughs> yeah so by I, their fathers. I'm, I'm i'm worried because we don't have um a goal you know, to set place for him, it would, you know, so I'm, 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 so right now I'm trying to figure out as being a father, what am I going to do? You know, what uh, you do is support him because yeah. boys do mature way later oh, yeah. than girls. Oh, oh, yes. So you're, you're probably going to wait till he's about what? 22, 23. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, you'll catch him before he's an adult. Then all, you so, know, all I mean, of a sudden one day he's going to go, dad, I know exactly what right. I want to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's, that's the biggest thing. I hear that a lot too, you know, yeah. well, oh, you're pushing him and coursing him. No, no. Well, when did this, wh- so this is. Give him this, different opportunity. This bill's going to, we. when does this bill, bill get voted on? This is on the floor right now. This could get, yeah. this could get voted on tomorrow. This could get voted on. So, the next so week. this, uh, it's this getting is voted going on to get this voted session. on this session. So it's going to be voted. When is that session though? Uh, I think the session ends in uh, September, yeah, September or October. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so what's it's going to be voted on? This okay. Session. So f- first and foremost, people have to have access to this, which we can put out online. People can make their own decision there. Uh, this is 700 pages. That's a lot of pages to actually to get the nuts this, and bolts of it. This uh, what they what they obviously you don't have 700 pages yeah, no, sitting no. here. No. Uh, if you go online and, and look it up, it gives you the overall. It gives you. You can go in and get the detail. I mean, you can go into the bill and read the whole. Yeah, that, that, I'm that kind of person because I can't stand when I see the bullet points because I know that that's. Well, the bullet points could be the opinion of someone that has a completely different opinion than me. Right. Very true. Um, <laughs> I don't so, know that I want so, to. Well, just it, it's not follow. leaving. It leaves out. Well, that it, it's the, the the what's that? The perfect lie. Yeah. It leaves out 
some of the all truth. True, sure. Well, you perfect know, lies, so, all truth. With so, one thing left you out. know, obviously yeah. we know just from national conspiracy, we know that there's a lot of bills that get put out there that are t- tainted as good bills, but they're not. Well, it, or toted also, as yeah. good bills, I mean. And the, the problem is the art of politics where we put all this good stuff in and we bury this crap that nobody right, would right. vote for so that you got to vote for the whole thing. Exactly. Well, you can also look it up, too. There's seven states. I'm not, from, I'm not exactly sure which seven there are, but there are seven states that are practicing this. They already put this, in, already place. Put this in place. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, we could probably get statistics just from sure. that. The state know? of Washington. Yeah. The state of Washington's a big one. I follow a lot of the Michigan the Michigan Fathers Ooh, Rights groups. I know that's a liberal yeah. state. Well, no, I, I, Washington. Uh, I, I was out at Fort Lewis, and I'll tell you what: there was a lot of guys that um, their wives waited till they got to Fort Lewis to divorce them because that's such a liberal state. The guys just got hammered. I mean, well, we had E sevens that were living in the barracks because they didn't have enough of their money left. <laughs> to well, do anything it's not happening now now the state of illinois did turn it down but you know that's well that's another liberal state yeah. so um but uh you yeah, know we need on, to get the statistics yeah from going off these bullet points it, it 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 definitely appears to me that this would be uh, a paradigm shift on understanding well who, who is the parent and who has the best interest of the child i really love that that was here because of what i'm dealing with with the immunization of my children because right now tim i i don't know if i told you i uh I um I'm not signing a waiver for my kids ever again, and so uh, I, and I don't immunize. And uh, now should I shut him down for getting off the subject? So locus lo, 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 local <laughs> is it is it called lo, lo, loco parentis. loco parentis? And I just learned the word. I didn't know what it was until I start looking in the Addison School or their bylaws on their website, and it's they bring that word up a lot. And I'm like, what the hell is that word? But so it's acting in guardianship. Acting it's a, in guardianship. Okay. Yeah, it's so a Latin like, word that's Yeah, used, it's a Latin word, right? It's so. a Latin word that's used in, in well, legal. Your school board is smart enough at one time to write this. No, our school board's not smart <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm saying at one time, right? They took the notes from somebody like, else. Why are they putting Latin? Hey, plagiarism is alive and why well. Are they putting, <laughs> why are they putting Latin words into the bylaws of your local school? Because Latin words are legal words. Right. Right. <laughs> Right, so 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 understanding, Legal, not understanding, yeah, it makes yeah, perfect sense. Yeah. So you know, I already well, only know. having one definition. That's <laughs> why they usually use Latin words. Well, I already the word know doesn't change right. with the dictionary. Whoever's right, I already it. know that, that that's the states taking the, the the idea that they're the guardian of the child. I already know that this is actually giving that back to the parents, even though they they should have never had that in the first place. No. Right, right. So I think that's well, a good thing. The other thing is, I I, I hate this this idea that. Well, uh, you're only a good parent if your parenting looks like my parenting. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. no. They, no. they actually take that every out of here chi- too. Yeah, right. every child, every child has their own parent, and never none of the tri- children came with instruction manuals. Yeah, like that's and that's, so that's what they're every, saying in here. They're saying yeah. that like if you if you my, to my, be considered a bad parent, that you have to go deep. Yeah, my right. dad taught me. My dad, Paul Rutan, taught me how to be the best Rutan I could be. Right. And Joe Kennedy taught his kids how to be the best Kennedys they could be. And that's just how it is. Right. Nobody comes with an instruction. And so my parenting isn't going to look like your parenting. And that doesn't make my parenting wrong. Yeah. This rules out a lot of judgment. And and, and, and that's in that that, that paradigm shift of ruling out judgment like from other people. You should be allowed to give your mores and norms to your children. That's part of creation. Nobody even knows what that means. Everybody knows what mores and norms mean. No, they don't. No, they don't, John. Okay. Nobody right. does. Mores and norms, um, those are the the mores, the 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 moral compass that I have, the beliefs oh, okay. that I have. My, okay, if that makes I'm, sense. If I'm conservative, my kids will probably be conservative because right. that's what I'm going to raise. I'm going to procreate myself right. in my children so that five generations down the line, they can go, hey, I can see John Rutan and you, and they go, take that back. <laughs> Don't you say that? Don't again. ever say that again. <laughs> that's it. But but that's the mores and norms. That's how you procreate. You you spread those things, your ideas, your 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 family history, your culture to your children. Okay. That's the mores and norms. Well, Tim, is there anything else you want to talk about on this bill? No, really. All I want to do now is just uh, you know encourage people to call. encourage just call. So we got to yeah. yeah, we got to call Eric. We got to get we got to call Eric. You know, and this may reach people that we uh, could email them too. 
I definitely can do that. Well, this may reach people that are outside of Eric, so uh, you know, I, I guess we probably need to just encourage you to reach out to your local representative. They, period. You could even, um, well, uh, Jim Jim Runstad Runstad, you know, and, out of and, uh, Milford area and White Lake area, high, probably Highland, I would assume. Yeah, and uh, I've got his phone number here. Go ahead and put his phone number because people, you know, obviously he's the one that's pushing this, so people can call him and ask him, "What can I do?" Right, and uh, his phone number is five one seven three seven three. Eight zero eight zero, and, and that's, that's exactly that, what I did. That's actually going to be out of. He's out of a Lance. That's his Lansing office. That's the Lansing that's, office. That's his office. Yeah. yeah, that's the legislative and, office. And just so everybody knows, that's that's what I did. Is I reached out to his office, uh, spoke to the gentleman that answered the phone there. Very very nice guy. Immediately emailed me all of this information that I wanted. Uh, still stays in touch with yeah. me, asking if there's anything else that uh, that I've seen that is that they that I don't like in it. And, you know, they're very, they're wanting to push this through. Um, I did sit down with Eric. I, I don't know if I ever told you this or not, but just prior to Christmas, I sat down with Eric uh, Lloydhauser and had a meeting on the child support system. Mm-hmm. And he assured me that there was some stuff being worked on. And, and then all of a sudden this pops up. Huh. I wonder if, um, I wonder if he's in tune with it. I, I mean, he's out of Michigan. I would assume, he, I would assume he's in I tune. I would hope he is. I mean, uh, this, this area is very. I'm going to call Eric's office and ask. This yeah. area, this area definitely is something he should be looking. Hopefully, at. I mean, hopefully we can read this, John. I mean, I mean that's a lot of time. Well, man. but I'm just being realistic here. But this oh. is what representative government's all about. We don't have time to set and read every bill. This is why we put someone there to to. And that's why he has a team of people, right? A, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but the other thing is, you know, I don't think you know our podcast is going to primarily be heard in Hillsdale. So again, let me sure. give let, let me give. Uh, uh, Eric Lloyd Hoiser's uh, representative Lloyd Hoiser's number again. That's area code five one seven three seven three one seven nine four. So you can we'll, call. We'll add it on. Uh, I'll put it on when I when I post it on a too. link. Okay, yeah, like That'll a link work. too. And I'll put it. It'll be on my. It'll be on my political post or my political page as well. Uh, and again, this is House Bill forty six ninety one. That's the thing that we want to remember. That that House Bill number is very important because House Bill forty six ninety two could be. I wonder who's opposed anything, of it. We anything. have to figure out who's opposed of it so we can call them. The last I heard were seven votes shy of getting it through. Oh, really? So we need to know who like does who's not voting. Well, yeah. How do we find that out, John? Yeah. Do you know? Mm, yeah, we can call. Uh, they should have. Um, Maybe maybe one of these guys could tell us. Eric yeah, or Jim. I, I think if we call, if you call, if you call Gary at uh, at um, Eric's office, uh, Gary's his uh, like his, assistant, his legal guy, and Gary Gary should be able to tell you either where to go on on the on the internet to to find, um, you know, to potentially whose votes or what, or they might even have a lot of. A lot of uh, people in in government have um, statisticians that work for them, and so a lot of times they might not know exactly how a vote's going to go, but they've got pretty good well, idea. Well, also, and where so does they it go can from here? Kind of give you ideas where. Where does it go from here? How does this work, John? So it's on the floor. So it goes on the floor, and then they say if they, it gets voted down, it's dead. Okay. So if it gets voted for, it uh-huh. goes to the governor to be signed. If the governor signs it, it's law. If he vetoes it, it oh, comes okay. back to the house. Oh, okay. 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 That's where it's at. That's the. That's so so where at this that's point, at. at this point, there's no, there should be no problem with calling the governor's office at this point and saying, hey, if this bill goes through, we want you to sign it. Well, it, the, the right. governor's I'll office be. isn't going to even worry about anything until it hits their death. Right. Well, sure. Okay. Sure. So, like, I, what we as soon so as it gets passed, then you start yeah. calling at right. your state state senators level and and representatives level. Your representatives level, they're the ones that have your interest. They're yeah. supposed to have so, so your interest at if heart. If this gets passed by them and it goes to the governor's office, at that point is when you call the yeah, governor's office. That's when you start going, "Hey, okay, th- you know, we'd like you to consider that." Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I think that's about it. What do you think, Tim? I think we covered it. John, anything I think it's else? Good. All right. Well, everybody, you got blessed. Take care. Go ahead and say goodbye, everybody. Read your constitutions. Goodbye. Thank you.